Uh, Gorilla Mode, same people wanting to trade Mason will be the ones complaining if we need Mason. Or, same people wanting to trade Mitch will be the ones complaining if we need Mason to win games. Nah, One right. fluke injury to KP uh-huh. and our season will be over. You're right, bro. You're right, man. And that's always my thing. Um, regardless of position, more so when we talk about the cutting costs or saving costs mindset, you have to be careful with that mindset. Yes, you want to save money because of the salary cap, but at the same time, you do have to have a proper balance of having just some higher end insurance, man. Even if it costs a little more and maybe we feel like, oh, man, we could have got this over here. You still need that type of policy because literally all these guys that we love are one play away, man. And if they do happen to go down, well, now, you know, our season could potentially go down into the tube. So that's the one thing like I would just continue to say, man, whether it pertains to Mitch or any of these other guys that have a little bit higher salary or ticket price, but maybe don't have the same level of production or role that we once thought they should have. You still got to be careful with how you determine, you know, who stays on this roster and who doesn't because you don't want to get caught, you know, a little less than ready with that cupboard a little empty. And right now, we're not going to have a lot of matches where we feel like a team has more talent than us and more depth than us. That's the beautiful part. So I'm like, we don't need to do a lot of altering and messing with that, man. If Mason wanted to come back, I see no problems here. Yeah. I, I, I see no way how you could hate on us signing Mason yeah. Rudolph. And it had to be mutual. That's the other part. It's not like Mason can sign himself. So there had to be mutual interest. That had to mean that Coach T and this organization still see something in Mason and they still feel like he can help this team be better because otherwise, why would you waste a spot on a quarterback that you don't feel like is ever going to play? That's not the case. You bring him in here because you think he can at least come in here and give you something. He can compete for depth or potentially be a guy that is a next man up candidate. That's just how Coach Tomlin, you know, constructs that roster and stuff like that. So it's clearly both sides. They felt that it made the most sense. For Mason, you test your market. It's not there. Could it have been potential suitors out there? Who knows? But either way, he came back here. And for the Steelers, they could have been like, bro, we got Tanner Morgan. We didn't give him your number. Leave us alone. We're good. But they also said, no, nah, man, we'll take you back. A little cheaper deal. But we'll bring you back for this opportunity because it does still make sense. Yeah, it's going to be like a million bucks. Right, that's what it. So, and he's going to be QB3. Yeah. Like, w- there is literally no harm right. to this move. I, I, I see no negatives. Right. He's going to be there. He's going to help out Kenny Pickett. Mm-hmm. He's been in the system everything. This will be his sixth year. Yeah. And then, yeah, if you do get into a situation with injuries and whatnot, I feel like you get out of a stadium with Mason. He's better mm-hmm. than Tanner Morgan. I'll take him over Tanner yeah. Morgan. I'll tell you that. Yeah. And we've already seen him play in the NFL. He's actually won games in the NFL. We've seen this before. And like I said, the, the big knock on him a year ago was the money part. It was like, man, if he's going to be the third quarterback, you don't want to be paying this dude more than what you're paying Mitch, potentially, or, or flirting with that range when he was getting the, was it the five mil a year type concept. Whereas, like, now that goes out the window. Now you're getting a really good player for that value. We were talking about the $1 million value at the quarterback position. So, yeah, man, I'm with you, man. I don't see a lot of negativity there, man. I think he would be a good backup if he was one. Mm-hmm. But him being a QB3, he's probably the best third stringer in the league. I was like, when you say QB3, I'm like, yeah, because most teams even have QB3s. You know what I mean? We started looking at practice squad. Like, who are you stashing over there? So, you're absolutely right. Like, Mason at that level, what more do you want? But if Mitch leaves after this year and we bring back Mason to be our backup, I'd still feel confident in that. I think mm-hmm. he'd be a really good backup. For yeah. Because there's some bad backups. I'm just saying. No, like, there's some bad backups. And that's there. the thing I feel like we lose sight of because we are so, like, heavily focused on Pittsburgh. Like, think who's made a career right. out of being a backup. Chase Seriously. Daniel. Like, he could be good for the locker room, good uh-huh. for the QB room, but... I don't feel confident in him at, at all if you have to go in there and, and win a game. I take Mason over him. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Absolutely, man. Absolutely.